Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 4, Part 2. This video is going to follow directly on from Part 1, so here we go. Okay, moving on to the radiator. This is the Black Ice GTX Extreme Gen 2 560mm radiator. Now, as you can see, it has quite a dense fin array. It has 20 fins per inch. And not only that, you can see there's actually two rows of fins there per channel. You can see that the between the channels, yeah, there's two rows and then the fins meet. So this makes for an even more dense fin array and for an even more high performance radiator. The performance of this radiator is just incredible. According to Black Ice, this radiator can handle 2350 watts of heat. And yeah, that's Black Ice's most high performing radiator. To get the maximum out of this radiator, you really need some good high performance fans that push a lot of air. You can see it has a gloss black finish. I actually need to give it a bit of a polish before I install it. It's just got some marks and dust on it from when it was in the box. Extremely high quality radiator. Right down to the paint job. It's got M4 threads here for mounting. G1 quarter inch threads for the input and output. Okay, now for a look at all of the water blocks that are going into the build. So, I have the EK Supreme HF and I have two EK FC 7970 water blocks. These are all nickel plexi blocks. I'm going to get these out of the box and give you a close look and then I'm going to move on to installing them. Included in the package is all the necessary mounting hardware for Intel and AMD. Socket 2011 mounting hardware is also now included. The mounting system for this water block is just excellent. You also get some included Arctic MX4. Now for a look at the water block itself. So that is one impressive looking water block. The quality is just excellent. Everywhere you look, it is just absolutely perfect. Not only that, the performance is as good as it gets. So, this is definitely always my first choice for a CPU water block. And any other water block for that matter. I always turn to EK for water blocks. So there we go, now I'm going to give you a look at the graphics card water box. Alright, I've got them both out of the box. Again, the necessary mounting hardware, instructions, thermal pads. Now for a look at the water blocks themselves. So, these are both exactly the same block, but I just thought I'd get them both out to give you a look. Again, an incredible looking water block. The quality of the design, materials and construction is absolutely excellent. And I love the new, new design. These cuts look great. So, you can see most of the surface area where the fluid runs. There's just one area here that's covered. And I'll just turn it over. I'm speechless. I'm going to get these water blocks installed and then I'll give you another look. Okay, I'm just in the process of putting the water block on the second graphics card. I've already finished the first one. The reason why I'm not showing you the process is because I already have a tutorial on how to install a water block onto a graphics card. Click on the link on the screen if you want to check that out. I just thought I'd give you a quick look at the PCB before I install the water block. 
Okay, I've got the water blocks installed on the graphics cards and now I'm going to give you a good look around. The water blocks were a breeze to install, absolutely no worries there. Sometimes the stock coolers are a little bit hard to remove but there was absolutely no worries. Both of the graphics cards, I think it took me about maybe 10 to 15 minutes per graphics card so that's how quick and easy it can be. Really happy with these water blocks, very impressed. And I'm sure they're going to perform incredibly well. Okay, so I'm going to get some good close-up shots now. I'll try to give you a bit of a look underneath between the water block and the PCB. You can see the some of the thermal pads there on the memory. There's another one back there on the power delivery components. So it would be nice if the entire PCB was covered, you know, to protect the PCB, like you see with some of the some of the SwiftTech water blocks, but it's it's kind of unnecessary and it would make the these water blocks so much more expensive and heavy, you know. And I think they look absolutely amazing, like how how they are. So it would also be nice to change out the back I/O panel here for a single slot instead of a dual slot because you know the graphics card now only takes up a single slot and that is something that you can do you can actually buy the single slot back IO panels for this graphics card from EK now the only difference on this side of the PCB now is the screws these screws come with the water block you get these black screws and also the the white plastic washers you know to protect the PCB okay let's have a look at the top so I would really like to use the EKFC bridge in this build but for one thing the budget doesn't allow for it and also I don't have any in stock and it would take me another two to three weeks to get them in stock so I'll definitely be using the Bits Power Crystal Link which I think is more aesthetically pleasing I think it looks a lot better and I think it will match up with these you know plexi blocks a lot better as well okay I've actually just started the build now I've just done a few little things to it and one of these things is that I've mounted the Corsair HX 1050 onto the power supply panel so this case takes up to two power supplies you can see they can both fit there mounted vertically onto that panel and then that panel fits into the back of the case here so that the power supplies mount into the bottom compartment now the bottom compartment is also where I'm going to be installing the 560 millimeter radiator because that is how this case is designed. You can put a up to a 560 millimeter radiator and depending on the length of your power supply you can also get another radiator on the side that you install the power supply. So I'll be installing the power supply onto this side, the radiator will be going on the other side but because of the hardware, the, the amount of components that I'm water cooling in this build, I don't need, need any more than a 560mm radiator, so it won't be necessary for me to mount another radiator onto this side. Anyway, I thought I'd just take the opportunity to give you a look at the power supply before I install it. So I'll just give you a bit of a, a look around. I do have a product overview on this power supply, which is something that I forgot to mention in the introduction so I'll put a link on the screen to that it's it's quite a quick video so I will still give you a decent look around the power supply so 
Just a look at the back, it's got a nice big on-off switch, plenty of ventilation on the back there. And just a look at the modular connections, so the non-modular cables, you can see them there, they're all, they're pretty long, I think they're about probably 600 mil long. We've got the 24 pin motherboard power and two PCI Express 6 plus 2 pin and also an 8 pin EPS, it's actually 4 plus 4, I think you can split that one in half. So there's the modular connections there, so there's a total of 12 SATA 12 Molex and then the blue connectors there are for the yeah, PCI Express 6 plus 2 pin of which there's another 4 and there's also another 4 plus 4 8 pin EPS CPU power connector 1050 watts total 87.5 amps on the single 12 volt rail okay so this is the dust filter actually you get two of these included with the case so that you can install them onto your two power supplies it's a magnetic dust filter so it fits onto the power supply quite nicely the radiator because it's 560 millimeter it has four 140 millimeter fans and I'm using this very same dust filter on the radiator but I'll show you that in a minute okay so what I've done here I've actually mounted the reservoir on the pump and I've also installed the storage drive into the build which is something that I forgot to mention I'm using as well as the Corsair Force GT 60 gig SSD I'm using a Western Digital Green 2 terabyte storage drive and you can see there that's the Silverstone hard drive cage that converts three 5.25 inch bays to three 3.5 inch bays and that's all that I'll be installing because this is a gaming build you know if anything there's another two spots there the client can put another couple of two terabyte drives or more and that should be absolutely plenty so you know any more hard drive capacity than that in this build shouldn't be necessary by default the this case actually comes with two hot swap hard drive cages in the bottom here and it fits up to six 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives but because I'm putting the radiator into the bottom compartment I've had to pull that out and that's why this case has so many 5.25 inch bays it's got nine of them so that you can install hard drive cages you know into the 5.25 inch bays when you're water cooling so that should be plenty of hard drive space for this build and I've actually changed the reservoir I was going to use the EK DDC X Res, which is actually a, a pump top combined with a reservoir. So it's a pump top that actually fits onto this particular pump, and the the reservoir part of it screws into the top of the pump top. But the the problem was the the reservoir itself was too small. It was a 50 millimeter in diameter reservoir by about 100. Well, it's the DDC X Res 140, so it's 140 millimeters long. And, you know, in this case, it was just absolutely dwarfed. It looked way, way too small. So I grabbed a Bits Power 150 millimeter reservoir out of my stock, and I've decided to use that instead just because it's much more aesthetically pleasing. So I've installed the Swiftech MCP35X and I'll just give you all of the maximum specifications on the pump so it can handle up to 4.4 meters of head 22 psi and it it does a thousand and fifty liters per hour okay so that's pretty much all you need to know about the pump I've just left the pump completely at stock I haven't installed a custom pump top or anything like that and you know I'd go and do all of those extras but the the budget of the build doesn't allow for that you know I put that instead of going for those extras I've gone for extra GPU power you know because it's a gaming build that's where I put a lot of the the budget of this build so just a quick look at the B 
Bits Power 150mm reservoir. I've used the mounts that come with the res and the way I've mounted it, I've mounted it into the 5.25 inch drive bay. So I've actually mounted it upside down. Normally, well it's not exactly upside down but on the bottom there's just one opening and on, on the top there's three openings. And the reason I've done that is so that you can fill it through one opening and then I'm, what I'm planning on doing is, you know, I'm just planning things out as I go here because this is the first time I've built a system into this case. So what I'm thinking here, you can see I've got a, these are all Bits Power Black Sparkle fittings by the way, these are the fittings that I normally use and I'm going to be using throughout this build. Okay, so I'm going to go over all of the fittings, you know, when I've finished the loop. But what I've done here, I'm thinking the graphics card outlet is going to be probably somewhere up here, pretty close to this. And, you know, considering that the, the motherboard is in here, that the two graphics cards are somewhere there, the outlet will be somewhere here. So I'll probably have to put like another 90 or 45 here, and I might even have to change this to a or put a 45 or something, you know, so that it's pointing down this way. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet. But anyway, this is going to be coming back from the graphics cards here. So I've got a compression fitting, I've got a coolant filter here, I've got a bits power 90 degrees single rotary there. And I've put the, the tube inside the reservoir to get the, the coolant inlet down below the level of the coolant so that it doesn't, you know, trickle and splash and, and bubble and make noise. So yeah, that's coming back from the graphics cards and out the bottom straight into feeding the pump. The pump's going to push the coolant straight down through here and then, you know, the, the radiator I'm going to have facing up this way so that both of the fittings are here. So that's going to go straight into there, you know, then it's going to come back up, maybe up through here, up to the CPU, back to the graphics card. That, that's what I've got planned. That's what I've got going so far. So yeah, I've got another compression there and a... 90 degree single rotary there and then underneath here I actually have a bits power D plug it's actually a bits power quick disconnect but it's not a no spill quick disconnect it's just got like dual o-rings on it and you push it on there it's very secure fitting that can handle a lot of pressure and then it worked out quite well that the pump is actually sitting on top of the hard drive there so you know even if it wasn't even if it's hanging that's perfectly fine because you know these reservoir mounts are very tight you know that reservoir is going absolutely nowhere so you know just to give it some more security though it worked out well that it's sitting on the hard drive and, and I'm just going to put a little piece of foam stick it onto the the hard drive there so that there's no vibration between the pump and the hard drive so that's about it there are oh, the the mounts into the the 5.25 inch bays of I've, I've used the EK mounts I've forgotten exactly what they're called actually I've got the the bag over here I use these things all the time for okay EK uni holder yeah I use them for a whole bunch of different you know in in a whole bunch of different applications and I'll take you around the other side now I've used all the new you know nuts bolts and washers that I got just recently you would have seen them in my most recent singularity hardware order analysis it was actually video 9 so you know they're all black to to match up nicely with the case I had to use M3's here which is a little bit small but I really had no choice because that was the only thing that would fit through those holes but that is certainly going nowhere. Got all you know washers on on either side. There's the other two, so they're all nice Allen key bolts. I'll just show you from this side. The reservoir will will have to be filled from this side with a syringe. So you'll pull the back side panel off, undo this fitting here, and you know fill it down through there. I don't think that will be too much of a problem. That should work out pretty well. And the other thing I did was mount the SSD. So you can mount three SSDs on the back of the 5.25 inch bays in this case. You can see the mounts, you know, here. So the three SSD trays come included with the case. So I've just got one of them there. 
and mounted the SSD. The reason I put it at the bottom there was so that the cables are very close to the cables for this drive so that'll be all neat. So that's about everything that I've installed into the case so far. I've got the motherboard tray out. I'm just about to install the motherboard onto that and you know once that's in the case it'll really look like it's getting somewhere. Okay the radiator. I've got the radiator completely ready to go here. You can see I've got the filters and the fans on. I've used nice black Allen key bolts. So basically the the entire radiator configuration, the fans, the bolts, the filters, the grills, everything is black. You know, it all matches up really nicely. So these are the Silverstone 140mm filters. I'm really happy with the way this looks. I think it looks absolutely excellent. The gaps are here because this radiator actually has 20 millimeter gaps between the, the, you know, the mounting holes instead of 15 millimeter gaps like radiators normally have. So you can see each fan has a gap between it. So the noise blocker PK3s, they're all mounted and ready to go. Wow, that's heavy. I'm just about to put some extension cables onto the, onto the fans there. And then, so that will face the way it's facing now, but inside of the case. And it actually needs to be slid in through the back of the case. So that's the other reason that I haven't mounted the power supply yet, because I need to get the radiator in and mounted first. Okay, so on this side I've installed the black ModSmart 140mm grills. And this is because this side of the radiator is going right up against the power supply and it, it will be right next to the you know the cable management and you'll see what I mean once I've installed the power supply and the radiator and everything but all the cable management will be happening right about here and the cables could potentially damage the fins even put a hole in the radiator so these grills will protect the radiator from the power supply cables now I didn't have anything short enough to mount these grills like any short enough bolts or screws so I, I used 5mm M4 screws but I still had to use two washers and a spring washer to pack them up otherwise they would have pierced the radiator fins and you know destroyed the radiator so that's why I've got all those washers there I didn't have enough black washers because consider three washers per you know per screw is a lot of washers but this is going to be completely out of sight anyway so it doesn't matter if there's a few silver washers there so there we go that is all ready to go the next step for me now is to I mean there's a lot of things to do I've got to put the motherboard in I've got to get this radiator in and mounted get the power supply in I've got my bits power fittings collection out here all ready to go. So I've got every bits power fitting imaginable. And I always keep a lot of stock of fittings because you never really know what fittings you're going to need until you start building the system and designing the loop. Okay guys, I'm afraid that's about all I can show you until the next part of the build log. The next part of the build log will again follow directly on I'll yeah move straight on and continue with the mounting of the radiator because that is the, the next step in the build. Now I just like to say whenever you see a weird angle like this, you know the angle that I'm filming from right now, it usually means that I'm filming this later because yeah I'm filming this conclusion later and when the build is actually just about finished so I don't want to show you the finished product now, I need to keep it all a secret, but those of you with eagle eyes will be able to see yeah, some of what I've done, even though I'm trying to hide it. I would continue on and you know make the parts of the build log longer, but I've actually had quite a number of requests, you know, people telling me to make my videos shorter. I've also had a lot of people telling me, well not a lot, but yeah, a, a, f a few people telling me to make my videos less detailed. But I know that there's a lot of people that, you know, watch these videos for information 
to learn something. And that's the only reason that I'm talking. That's the only reason that I'm providing all of this information to help other people. This information is for anyone who needs it, who wants it. I mean, just think about it. I run a custom system building business. So in showing you all of this, I'm actually, you know, really giving away trade secrets here. So I'm going to provide as much information as I can. I'm going to continue to because, yeah, that's what my channel is about. So I'm sorry if that bores some of you, but you know, I hope there's a lot more of you out there who find it helpful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see